Hello, my YouTube friend Pop Comics here, and today we're going to go over more than 100 comic books that you want to be on the look for going through dollar bins, going to thrift stores, going to antique malls, going to any store that sells comic books. Okay, the first batch of comic books I want to go over are comic books I missed. Yes, there's a few comic books that I missed while going through bins in the last couple months. Uh, you guys have been really good at pointing out comic books I missed, and I really appreciate that. Uh, if you guys can think of any comic books that I should cover in the next video, let me know because I would like to do more videos like this. Okay, let's go through the comic books I missed. Okay, this is uh, Assassin's Creed. I don't think this comic book had a number. It was a promotional comic book, but it's the first appearance of Assassin's Creed. I actually saw this comic book, I think at the end of May, when I went to Dan's parents' house, I was digging through comic books. He ended up giving them to me for a dollar a piece. I skipped over this. I had no idea what this comic book. I thought it was just some cheap, free comic book that was worthless. Uh, but one of my viewers pointed out that this was an expensive comic book. So I looked on eBay and it's definitely, it's like a hundred to $200 comic book. So I actually told Dan to pull it out and he pulled it out. So I actually helped him make a little bit more money in his shop. Then while I was at Dan's shop, I also passed over Deathstroke number 15. This was not on my radar as a comic book of value to pick up. I do own this comic book. It's in my collection. I didn't realize it was the first appearance of Rose Wilson, which is pretty cool actually. So this is definitely a comic book worth picking up. It's not worth a whole ton, maybe 10 bucks, but definitely worth picking up. Okay, the next comic book is Fantastic Four 353, the first appearance of Mobius. This comic book for the longest time was like a dollar bin comic book, but when Loki came out with the first appearance of Mobius, the value shot through the roof. So I do kind of skip over not thinking about it, but it's really a comic book you should be picking up because it's like a $25 to $30 comic book. Okay, this comic book was not on my radar. Jughead 325. This is the second appearance of Cheryl Blossom, I think by just a couple weeks. So this one does have some value, 25 to 50 bucks. I, uh, I actually bought it in the big Archie collection I bought like a month ago. And I did end up giving him about half the value, I believe. But at the time when I filmed the video, I had no idea this one had value and someone mentioned it. I do appreciate when you guys point out comic books I miss because it lets me learn about more comic books. And then I like teaching you guys which comic books to hunt for. Okay, Thor 412, the first appearance of the New Warriors. Um, this one, eh, it's like a five to $10 comic book. Maybe if it's like near mint, you'll, you'll get $20. So it's not really worth that much unless it's really high grade. But uh, a bunch of people pointed it out when I was digging through the comic books, the Action City comic books a few weeks ago. And uh, it, it was mid-grade though. So it's probably only like a $2 comic book. So I probably shouldn't have pulled it out of value. But if you do see this issue in high grade and it's like five bucks, it's worth picking up. Next comic book is Saga Swamp Thing 20, the first Alan Moore on Swamp Thing issue. This one definitely has some value. I should have pulled it out. I just have it already. So I don't even, it's not like on my radar to pick up. But if you see this in a dollar bin, it's worth picking up because it does have some value. But it's also just a really awesome comic book. Okay, Captain Adam 42. This is another one that I passed by in Dan's parents' house. I didn't really like, it wasn't on my radar, but it's the first appearance of death in the main DC universe, not the Sandman universe. So this one does have some value. It's definitely worth picking up. Black Knight number one. This one I missed also when it was Action City comic books. Honestly, this comic book for 30 years has been, you know, 50 cent dollar comic book. So it wasn't on my radar. But with his appearance in the Eternals and people believe he'll be in the Blade movie or a future movie, the value has popped on this and people are speculating on it. So if you see it for a dollar, you might as well pick it up. Okay, the next section will be a couple of comic books I actually found recently in the last few months that have other comic books related to it that I want to expand on and show you more that I'm looking for. Okay, Sonic the Hedgehog number 98, the first appearance of Shadow the Hedgehog. I actually pulled this one out of a dollar bin a few, like a month or two ago. Uh, I almost put it back because it was kind of lowish grade. It had some dents and creases on it. But I kind of knew this was an issue of value. I just like, ah, no, I should grab it. I just didn't realize it was this good of an issue of value. This issue is worth hundreds of dollars if you find it in really good shape. So it's definitely worth picking up, even kind of beat up. You're going to pick it up. So keep an eye out. Now, because I did buy this from one of my favorite local comic shops, I only paid a dollar. I'm going to go back to the shop and buy more stuff. You know, when I do find a great deal like this, when I'm digging dollar bins at my favorite comic shops, what I like to do is, okay, so I got a really good deal here. I'm going to be less picky maybe in the future. I like to kind of reward my comic shops for, you know, just hooking me up with a great deal. Thunderbolts number one, this one has definitely jumped in value recently because they're working on a movie or they're going to do a movie in like a year or two. Uh, I picked this one up for five bucks about a month ago. I was kind of debating if I should pick it up. But I thought, you know, I should pick it up. I bet this has a value and it does. It's worth probably like 30 bucks now, maybe a little bit more. So you want to be on the lookout for Thunderbolts number one, but you also want to be on the lookout for Thunderbolts number one, second print. The second printing with the pink cover instead of the green cover, this one actually is worth a lot more. This one's like 40 to 80 bucks. Definitely worth picking up. 
And if you're on the hunt for Thunderbolt stuff, you might as well look for Hulk 449, their first appearance. This issue definitely has a lot of value right now. It really skyrocketed as soon as there's news that there's going to be a Thunderbolts movie. So definitely look out for this one because for the longest time, this was a dollar bin book. And you also might want to look for the reprint in Thunderbolts Prelude number one. This is a reprint of the Hulk issue. And this one, you know, is still like a $15, $20 comic book. So definitely worth looking for that as well. So this one kind of shocked me. I didn't realize it was going for so much. It's not that old. I think it's just a couple years old. It's the Spider-Verse number six. There's a whole bunch of first appearances in this issue. It's going for like $150 to $200 now. This is an issue you'll be able to find out there, I think, because it's not like a rare variant or anything. It was just the regular cover that you would have picked up at the comic shop. I told my friend Sean about it two weeks ago, and he actually found one in a dollar bin. So these are out there. It's worth looking for this issue. Definitely has some value. Uh, Doom Patrol 35, this is one I'm always looking for and always mix up. I'm always thinking, oh, it's Crazy Jane's first appearance. It's not her first appearance. It's the first appearance of Flex Metallo. It's definitely uh, one to look out for. I, I mean, if you love the Doom Patrol show, you want to look for this one. It's not super valuable. It's maybe like 5 to $10, maybe $20 if it's in really high grade. But I'm always looking at it and I found it multiple times in dollar bins. Definitely worth picking up. 35 is also the first appearance of Danny the Street. So... Uh, it's like a multiple first appearances. I think it's worth picking up. I pick it up whenever I can find it. And then while I'm at it, I'm looking for Doom Patrol number 36, which is the second appearance of Flex Metalla, etc. Not worth a ton, maybe five to ten bucks. But if you're going through a dollar bin and you find the two together, you grab both of them. And then Doom Patrol 19 is the first appearance of Crazy Jane. I'm always mixing those up, but this is one you want to look out. This is probably like the $15 to $20 issue. If you see it in a dollar bin, you grab it. It's worth some value. The purpose of this video is to help me remember more comic books to look for, to help you guys find more stuff. I don't really like the gatekeep. So if you're a new collector and you want to try to find some comic books of value, that's awesome to me. If you're a collector that's been collected for years, maybe it'll help refresh a little bit. And if you're someone who has a big collection of stuff that maybe you inherited and you don't know about, maybe this video will help you pull out a few things. And maybe you own a shop and you need to know more of what to dig out before you throw them in the dollar bin. Okay, this next segment are comic books. I dream of finding just rare, expensive comic books. The chances of finding these are super rare, but I'm always on the lookout. First, we have Thunderbolts number 110. This is the Venomized variant of this one. Really cool cover. I didn't realize it's only going for like 50 to 70 now. For a while there, it's going for one to 200. Price is down a little bit. I think I'm gonna try to just grab one of these because I've been looking for this one for years. I love the cover. I think it's just a cool looking cover. But again, this is not one you're gonna find easily. Uh, the next issue, I've been looking for this issue for years. We have Supergirl and the Legion of Superheroes number 23. A beautiful Adam Hughes cover. I love this cover. I've lost bids on it multiple times when it was around 100 bucks, And I always regretted not picking up for 100 bucks. Now it's like four, five, six hundred dollars $600. I'm just hoping that I bump into it accidentally in a collection sometime. One day I might just have to pull the trigger and spend a lot of money on it. Gorgeous cover though. There is a Mexican reprint that you can get a lot cheaper. And if you just want the artwork, it's maybe worth just picking that issue just to get a nice cover. That one's maybe like $50 to $100, but I would like to have the original. And then another one I kind of regret not buying when it was like 50 bucks is Teen Titans number 75. The Adam Hughes Starfire variant, beautiful cover. Again, it's like a $500 issue. I can only find one that sold in the last like month or so. Definitely a rare comic book and an expensive comic book. Next is Deadline number one. This is, I believe, a UK comic book. It's the first appearance of Tank Girl. I would love to find a copy of this. It's really expensive. Every time I kind of see a store that has some indie comic books from like the late 80s, I'm always hoping that's in there. So this is definitely one to try to track down. Next, we have Captain Marvel number 14. I believe this is the 1 and 30 Amanda Connor variant. This is the first cameo appearance of Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel. This is an issue that I regretted not buying when it came out for like 100 bucks. I was trying to get it. I just never saw it. And then I would see one occasionally sell for like 100. And then I was like, all right, the next one that comes up for 100, I will buy. I just missed out. Then it jumped to like 300. When it was at 300, I decided I grabbed the Italian reprint that was like a foil reprint. Awesome cover. I love the artwork. Uh, I'm glad I grabbed that. I grabbed that one for about... 75 i think which is about the price it still is so that one hasn't gone up but this issue is a ghost it's almost never for sale a nice high grade raw copy is going to be like five grand a graded high grade one is going to be through the roof this one is just impossible to find one day i'm going to own this but it just this is a hard comic book to own very hard expensive and rare 
Okay, next is Bee and Puppy Cat number nine. This is one I'm looking, I'm hoping to find a dollar bin because this was just the regular A cover. So this is just the one that would have been in the comic shops when it came out. It's a beautiful rose bish cover. Love the cover. I think it just, it's one of her best covers. And I'm just crossing my fingers, hoping I find it. But now that I see that I can maybe get like a 9.8 for $220, a raw copy for 100, I might just break down and buy this because for a while there was going for like double that. Awesome cover. I just... You know, I cross my fingers every time I see some Bee and Puppy Cat comic books in a dollar bin, hoping this issue is in there. Next is Amazing Spider-Man number 678, the Venomized cover. This came out the same month as the Thunderbolts, I believe. Super rare comic book. I only found one sold. It was a 9.2 that was a best offer on 2000, so I don't know how much below 2000 it sold. But this is an expensive comic book and a rare comic book. I remember years ago, Mercenot got one and he wouldn't mention where he got it. And that's been one of those mysteries that's been bothering me for years. Mercenot, if you watch this video, let me know where you got that comic book. <laughs> I'm so curious. Either way, I don't know if I'll ever own this issue, but I'm hoping one day I find it in like a dollar bin or something. Or I luck out and like a collection comes in and I spend like 800, maybe half value on it. Either way, awesome comic book. I would love to own it one day. Uh, next is Maximum Carnage number one. This comic book is a very thin, like kind of cheap feeling comic book. It was a free comic book that video game stores would give away if you bought the video game back in the day. So they maybe made like 5,000 copies of this. You buy the video game, you would get the free comic book. And I think most people just threw the comic book away or they read it once and then threw it in a pile and it got destroyed because it's just like really thin newsprint. So this is a rare comic book. If you see it somewhere, just buy it because it's worth hundreds of dollars. Okay, the next section I want to cover is Star Wars comic books, particularly Dark Horse comic books. I know there's a bunch of key issues. I know I'm going to miss a few. If there's a Dark Horse comic book I missed, let me know in the comments below. But I decided to throw them in this video just to give me a refresher of what I'm actually looking for. Every time I see Dark Horse Star Wars comic books, I'm like, oh, I know there's some of value. What do I grab? So this video will help me cover that. The first Star Wars Dark Horse comic book I'm always looking for is Knights of the Old Republic number nine. I think I have one in my collection. I'm not 100% sure. It's the first appearance of Darth Raven. This one's worth hundreds of bucks. Definitely a comic book you want to look out for if you see it. If you're looking through comic books in a dollar bin or a collection at like a flea market and you see Dark Horse Star Wars comic books or comics from this series, you want to look for this issue. Next, we have Star Wars Tales number 19. This is the photo variant cover. This is the first appearance of Ben Solo. It's like a $10 to $20 comic book. Definitely worth picking up if you see it cheap in a dollar bin or, you know, at a garage sale. Then we have Star Wars Tale 19. This is the regular cover. This also, again, it's the first appearance of Ben Solo. You know, in the movies, it's Kylo Ren. But in Dark Horse, it was, he was a little bit of a different character. Either way, this comic book has value. You want to pick this comic book up. Next is Star Wars Here to the Empire number four. This is the first cover appearance, I believe, of Mira Jade. Definitely has some value. Maybe like 20 to 50 bucks. Maybe 100 if it's in a high grade. Next is Star Wars Here to the Empire number one. This is the first appearance of Admiral Thrawn. This issue I had in my shop for 10 bucks for like two years. Kind of wish I didn't sell it, but the day that Ahsoka Tano showed up in The Mandalorian and she mentioned Admiral Thrawn, that next day I sold that comic book so quick and people are going crazy and the price jumped for 10 bucks, 100 bucks. That's what happens sometimes. Sometimes you have a comic book that sits around forever at a certain price and then some news happens of a show or a movie or something and the prices of these things jump up. I do have a really high grade one in my collection though. That's why I was selling the duplicate. But uh, you know, I kind of wish I had more now. It's okay, still happy to have it. All right, Star Wars Clone Wars number three, early Ahsoka Tano appearance. Uh, this issue is worth some money. I saw auctions sell from between 30 and 100 bucks. Uh, so if you get a high grade copy, it's probably like 50 to 80 bucks. So definitely want to look for this one. Star Wars Clone Wars number two, the second appearance of Ahsoka Tano. This one was going from between 45 and 100 bucks, even $200 I saw on sale. Definitely worth looking for this comic book. Okay, we have Star Wars The Clone Wars number one. This is the first appearance of Ahsoka Tano. This is the regular comic. There's also a rare version of this I'm gonna show you in a second. Uh, but this one, as you can see, the, all the raw copies are going for like $1,000 to $1,400. If you get a 9.8 graded, it's gonna go through the roof. Amazing comic book. You wanna look out for this one. And this is just a regular comic book. This is out there. You know, people would have just bought this for a cover price at the comic shop. It wasn't a rare variant or anything. It just, and it, for the longest time, it didn't have that much value, but a lot of these dark horse keys, they're gaining so much value now. 
Star Wars Clone Wars number one. This is the rare one of 1,000 copy issue. First appearance of Ahsoka Tano. This thing is through the roof. I only saw one raw copy and it sold for $3,300. A 9.2 sold. So that maybe the raw copy is around that same grade for $3,500. Although it was autographed. Uh, 9.6 was $4,500. to $10,000. If you see this comic book, if, even if you see it for like $100, and it's a little bit beat up, you probably pick it up. Because this is an amazing modern key. This is definitely a comic book of value. Okay, Star Wars 19 from the Dark Horse series. This is the first appearance of Ayala Secura. Uh, 25, 15, 90. Like, it's a, it's a little bit of a range. But if it's in good shape, you'd probably be able to get $30 to $50 easily. Maybe a little bit more. Definitely one to look out for. It's a cool comic book. And it's just fun to have a comic book like this in your collection. All right, Darth Vader number three. I mean, you guys should know of this one, but just in case you don't, first appearance of Dr. Afra, amazing Audie Granoff cover. I love this issue. I have probably like five to 10 of them. I always pick them up when I see them in dollar bins. Uh, but this is easily a $100 comic book. Definitely worth looking for. We got Darth Vader number one, a beautiful Audie Granoff cover. Love this cover. First appearance of the Black Carsantin, the Wookiee that was in the Boba Fett show. Love this cover and easily like a 10, maybe $20 issues. Definitely worth looking for. Okay, the next section, I have a group of modern comic books or comic books from the last about 10 years that I want to try to remember. Maybe there's a couple of older ones mixed in there. All right, let's see what's on this list of comic books. Okay, in the modern comic books, I this one wasn't on my radar to look out for, but King Thor number one is going for like 20 to 50 bucks. Definitely worth looking for. I bet you could find this one in a dollar bin. Mystic number 15, probably the only cross-gen comic book that's worth anything. It's like a $15 issue, but it's considered the first appearance of Harry Potter in comic books just because in this issue, there's a whole bunch of magic users from all over every universe. And Harry Potter just happened to be in a little scene. And so because of that, people started paying a little bit for it. So I, you know, I found it twice so far looking through dollar bins. Definitely worth looking for. It's got some value. Not like a cool comic book or anything, but it's fun to have just because Harry Potter is kind of cool. Invincible Iron Man number seven, the first, I believe, cameo appearance of Riri Williams. Uh, this issue, I always forget which one to look for. There's three printings, I believe. All of them are worth something. The third printing actually has Riri Williams on the cover, so that's kind of cool. So if you see this cover or any of the printing, the second printing I think has a blue logo and the third printing just adds the little circle with Riri Williams on it. These are all worth like 50 to 80 bucks. So if you see it cheap, worth picking up. Okay, next we have Invincible Iron Man number nine, the first full appearance of Riri Williams. The first print is going from like 90 to 140 ish. The second print with the blue logo is going for like 35, 40. So it's worth picking up either one if you see them cheap in a dollar bin. Either way, the first and second print, these would have just been the regular issue that you would have bought at the comic shop for cover price. So these are out there in collections and you will find this issue if you look for it. it might take a while, but this is not one that's gonna be super rare to find. You will find them if you keep hunting. I do believe that there is a rare variant to this issue though, and the rare variant is the one that's really expensive. All right, next we have God of War number one, first and second printing. Both printings are worth a ton of money. I think the second printing is actually kind of hard to find. Uh, but these you'll, you know, these you can find in dollar bins because most people aren't aware that it's worth so much. It's worth a couple hundred bucks. Uh, I think I have a couple in my collection that I've picked up cheap over the years. Definitely worth looking for. Okay, the next batch of comic books are just comic books I keep forgetting. Comic books, I'm like, oh, I need to look for this. Oh, what was it? I forget the name. So this little section are the comic books I keep forgetting. Coyote 11 is the first comic book that Tom McFarlane worked on ever. Uh, this one, I always forget which one it is, but it's this one, number 11. As you can see, it's going as low as 25 to 65 roll. So this is one you want to find in dollar bins. You will find them in dollar bins because no one will know off the top of their head that this is a key issue. You have to know what it is. And I'm always forgetting which one it is. So this is just to remind myself, but this is the one to find, number 11. While you're at it, you might as well look for Coyote number 12, the second Tom McFarlane in comic books, uh, not worth that much, $3, $5, $10 maybe. But if you see it in a dollar bin and you see it next to 11, you might as well grab it. Next is an old one. So I've been trying to do newer comic books in this collection, but I'm always forgetting what issue this is. <laughs> it's one of those ones that I really want. I'm always looking for. So it's All-Star Western number 10, the first appearance of Jonah Hex. If it's in like mid-grade, it's going to be worth a few hundred bucks. Like as you can see, a coverless issue went for 46 two to four hundred dollars for like a mid a little bit better grade this is the one i'm always looking for and i'm always thinking like you know it's something else because the title changes on issue number 13 so i'm thinking it's like the weird western i'm always kind of confused but it's all-star western number 10 is what i'm looking for i really want to find this one 
Uh, Cave Woman number one. Uh, like, I'm just reminding myself. I knew this is one of value, but I always forget what the cover looks like. This is just reminding me that this is a comic book worth a few hundred bucks. And it's the kind of comic book you want to look at if you see... Uh, like a mid to late 80s indie comic collection, you're going to look for this issue because this is the issue of value. Okay, we have another little batch of rare comic books that you want to be on the lookout for that have value. Let's go through this list. Betty 46, this is an issue that jumped in value last year. It had a homeschooling 2020 in the future where she's got a video monitoring. It like predicted the future practically. And it's kind of ridiculous how accurate it was kind of. So it's kind of fun. Uh, but if you see this in a dollar bin for a dollar you might as well pick it up i think i ended up getting mine on a lot on ebay for like ten dollars maybe i'm not 100 sure but it's a fun issue to look out for all right next is incredible hulk number 377 the first appearance of professor hulk this one you find semi-often i've found this one a dozen times i think it's maybe like a 10 15 dollar issue it's a cool cover and it's a cool key issue so i like finding it but but you also want to look out for the second print which is also like a 10 20 maybe 30 dollar issue this one's kind of cool kind of like the reverse black and green where they reverse the colors a little bit but the one you really want to look out for is the third print the third print is the one with the purple logo with the the green is more like a olive green so it's similar to the other one but this is the one that's worth two to three hundred dollars my friend sean actually pulled this one out of a dollar bin a few months ago maybe six months ago he thought it was the other one just the colors off a little bit and when he showed me i was like oh dude you found the rare third print i actually had one in my class i was looking for this for years i actually had one in my collection not in the best shape maybe a mid-grade copy but i had a pile of comic books i bought maybe 100 comic books i paid 10 cents a comic book because they're all kind of like read through and kind of beat up not destroyed so maybe like four of the sixes but in my mind it was just the regular cover it had just yellowed because i thought it had aged i didn't realize it was the third print one i was thrilled when i actually found it when i was sorting through i was like wait a second <laughs> so i found it in my own collection but definitely look out for the olive green version this is the one that's worth a ton of money okay so the next session is going to be Marvel Age comic books. For the longest time, Marvel Age comic books to me have just been cheap dollar bin or less comic books. But in the last five years or so, there's been a whole bunch of those of people are starting to pay five, ten, twenty, fifty, a hundred dollars for. So I figured we'd go through the list of Marvel Age and kind of hit most of the key issues. Marvel Age 12. This is the preview with the black suit Spider-Man. Uh, I don't know if this predates like. Amazing Spider-Man 252 or anything, but people start paying like 20, 30, 40, 60 dollars for this issue. So number 12 is definitely worth picking up. Marvel Age 41, this is the Stanley photo cover. As you can see, it was as low as three dollars, but I think that was kind of a lower grade one, and as high as like 34 dollars for a higher grade one. So if you see a high condition one, it's gonna be 20, 30 bucks. If it's like mid-grade, maybe 10 dollars. Uh definitely worth picking up though, especially if you see it in a dollar bin. Marvel Age 71, awesome Mobius cover with the Silver Surfer. Like a $10, $15 issue, definitely worth picking up. Just for the awesome cover, honestly. And the fact that it has a little value, that's just an added bonus. Uh, Marvel Age number 76, I actually skipped over this one while going through uh, the, the comics of Action City. It's kind of a sexy cover and it's, you know, She-Hulk is popular right now. It's going to be a, maybe a $10 issue if it's in decent grade. There's a couple sales I saw a little bit lower for like mid grades, but definitely worth picking up, especially if you see it in a dollar bin. Uh, Marvel Age 90, just an awesome Tom McFarlane Spider-Man cover. It's maybe like a $10 to $50 depending on condition, but you know, that's still worth picking up. If you see it for a dollar in a dollar bin or like a flea market, you're going to buy that. This is a comic of value. Uh, Marvel Age number 97, people consider this the first appearance of Dark Hawk because it came out before number one. Uh, people are paying up to $30, $40 for high graded ones. So if you see this one cheap, you definitely buy it. Uh, Marvel Age number 98, this is again like the first appearance of the Toxic Avenger. It's a $20 to $40 issue, definitely worth picking up if you see it. Marvel Age 104, a really awesome Jim Lee X-Men cover. I think this cover is awesome. I love the little cartoon version of like a self-portrait he did this is a fun comic book honestly this it's worth let's see it's going for as low as eight for like a mid-grade as high as 40 50 I, I think this is worth picking up definitely i just i love the cover on this one and then marvel age 114 i think this is it's the first appearance of spider-man 2099 i think something like that it's going for 10 to 30 dollars so yeah definitely worth picking up Okay, and then the last batch of comic books I want to go through in this video will be a whole bunch of Spawn comic books. Uh, when it comes to Spawn comic books, anything over 100, I pretty much grab out of dollar bins because they all have a little bit of value. And the variants have a lot of value. I'm not covering the variants. For the most part, we're just going through A covers, the covers that you can find if you find a collection of Spawn comic books. But in most cases, if I'm showing you the A cover, 
the variants are going to be worth just as much, if not more. So you kind of want, you know, listen to the numbers. If I tell you a certain number, if you find that number, but it's a different cover, it probably has just as much value as I show you. Okay, now we have a lot of Spawn comic books to go through. Uh, I really wanted to go through this list though, because I kind of want to ingrain all the covers in my mind, because a lot of times you'll see Spawn comics for like five bucks. And at five dollars, there's some issues that I don't really want to grab, but there's a lot of issues that are expensive. So one thing, this is Spawn number one. This is the newsstand variant. The newsstand variant, as you can see, is going for like 75 to $100 in high grade. This one is worth a lot more than the regular one. The regular one in high grade is like 25 to 30 ish. Uh, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, but the newsstand is worth a ton more. So when you see Spawn comic books, if you see lower numbers, look for that barcode. If the barcode's on it for any issue from one to a hundred or even higher than a hundred, I pick them up. Why? Because the newsstands are rare and sometimes I don't even notice it because I'm not really thinking about it because most Spawn issues aren't really worth that much or maybe they're five to ten dollars online but in my shop they don't sell that well so i don't really pick them up that often i'm mostly looking for myself so if i see one with a newsstand though i'm definitely picking that up all right spawn 77 is the first archangel spawn this issue has some value like 40 to 60 even 90 dollars for a high grade one uh this is one definitely has value and it has value it's a common issue so you'll be able to find this one but it has value because it's a first appearance i don't think it's that rare this one i've found many times uh, but once you pass number 100, they get a little bit rarer and harder to find. So a lot of the ones above 100 are worth something just because they're rare. But then there's key issues. So we have Spawn 119. This is the first cameo of the Gunslinger Spawn. Uh, this one, as you can see, won the $200. So really high grade, maybe even $300. Uh, this is definitely the one you want to be looking out for, though. If you see a pile of Spawns, they're like $5 each. If you see this issue, this is the one you're going to look for. Okay, then Spawn 139 is the first She Spawn appearance, a uh, low print run. This is going for like a mid grade, maybe 60 bucks, high grade, 100, 140. This is definitely one to look out for. Uh, Spawn 141, the first cover appearance of She Spawn. This is again low print. This one looks like it's going anywhere for like 75 to 160 ish. So yeah, this one definitely has value. Oh, and the one thing I want to mention is a lot of these spawn issues also have variants or might have two, three, four different covers. I'm just showing you the A covers, the more common ones, the ones that you'll be more likely to find. But if you see the same issues, but with a different cover, the same number, buy that. Because that's going to be worth just as much in most cases. Or even if they're not worth as much, if it's $150, but then the second print is worth like half that, that's still a $75 comic book. It's worth picking up. I know Spawn 150, I have like three or four different versions. This is just the more common one, I believe. Definitely worth picking up though. As you can see, it's like 64 to 150 bucks. Crazy. I don't think this is the first appearance of anyone or anything specifically of value. It just, it's an anniversary issue at 150 and it's a low print run. So because of that, that's why it has some value. Spawn 165, this is the first Mandarin spawn. It's going for like 60 to $121. So this is definitely one to look out for. All right, Spawn 174, this is the first appearance of the Gunslinger Spawn. This issue is through the roof in value. I see, let's see, the lowest one I found was 256, as high as 750. If this is a high grade, it's gonna be worth a ton of money. So you, this is just the regular, you, you went to the comic shop, you could just bought this. This is the one you most likely will be able to find. If you see someone selling at a garage sale Spawn comic books that are from the early 2000s, 2010s, this is one that you might find. Spawn 175, this is again just a regular cover. I could not find raw copies selling. So I think this is the second full appearance of the Gunslinger Spawn, but I think this one's rarer or harder to find. So this one, so I guess the lot of two went for 750. So this one might only be like 150, 200 ish. Still a very expensive modern comic book. Okay, next we have Spawn 179, the first war spawn uh if you guys i'm giving you guys all the a covers if you guys want me to do another video where i show all the variants for all these spawn covers just let me know in the comments below uh this one looks like it's going from between like 50 and 90 dollars ish spawn 183 the first appearance of morana uh the price is all over the place it looks like it was like 15 dollars in the uk but with high shipping so as low as like 26 in the us as high as 120 so it's all over the place, but it definitely has a value. If you see it for like five bucks, you definitely need to pick it up. Spawn 184, the second appearance of Morana. Uh, it's like uh, $25, $50. Definitely another comic book of value. 
All right, Spawn 185. Now the one I have pictured here is the headless variant. And this one looks like it went for $700. Whereas the regular variant where you see his head is going for like 25 to 125. So if you see this issue, you pick it up. But if you see the headless version, this is the one that's gonna be worth a ton of money. Definitely look out for that one. All right, Spawn number 193. I think this is just a really low print run. It looks like it's going from like 25 to $70. The sketch variant is still around the same price. So if you see this cover, it's definitely worth picking up. All right, Spawn number 197, another low print one. This one went as low as 10, but it looked like a bunch were going for like 25 to 40. So again, if you see this one cheap, you pick it up. Spawn number 199, another very low print one. This one's going from like 40 to 90. Definitely one that has value. So if you see it cheap or for like five bucks, you pick it up. Spawn 216, the first appearance of the freak. This one's going from like 100 to 185. So this one definitely has some value. Spawn 217, I think this is the second appearance of the Freak. Again, low print run, and it's going from like $60 to $100, $150 even, so worth picking up. Okay, then when you get into the 200s, there's a lot of issues with homage covers. And when I first saw these, I thought they were all variants and hard to find, and that's why they were expensive. But no, a lot of these homage covers were the actual, just the regular A cover that you would got at the comic shop when it first came out. But because they're such awesome covers and the print runs are pretty low, these are all expensive. So you have Spawn 221, the Amazing Fantasy 15 homage. This one's like $150 to $200. This one is awesome. Definitely, if you see it for $5, you see it for a dollar, even if you see it for like 50 bucks and it's in good shape, it's worth picking up because this is a valuable comic book. Spawn 222, this is homage to Amazing Spider-Man 316. That really awesome Venom cover. Love this homage cover. It's awesome. It's uh, like a $50 to $70 issue. Definitely worth picking up just for the awesome cover, honestly. Uh, Spawn 223, The Walking Dead homage. This one's awesome. This one is like a 50-ish dollar one. So not as worth as much as the Spider-Man ones, just because obviously Tom McFarlane homaging himself is going to be worth more or more desirable. Or Tom McFarlane homaging the first appearance of Spider-Man, where he had a big influence on Spider-Man. So that's like he connects more with that. But still, I love The Walking Dead. So I think this is a cool cover. All right, Spawn 224, The Dark Knight homage. I, this is cool. <laughs> it looks just like the Dark Knight cover, but Spawn. I love this cover. I think it's awesome. It's like a $40 to $80 comic book. Definitely worth looking for. All right, Spawn 226, the Incredible Hulk 340 homage. He, he is homaging his own artwork. I love when McFarlane does that on these covers. I think this is such a cool cover. Uh, this one is going for like $80 to $100. Definitely worth looking for. All right, Spawn 227, the Amazing Spider-Man 300 homage. This is one of my favorite homages, but just because it's such a classic cover. And so this is worth trying to track down. It's currently going for like 75 to 125. So this one definitely has some value too. Okay, and then we have Spawn 228, Action Comics number one homage. It was amazing that he did so many issues in the 200s that were going back to classic covers and just doing his own version of it. And this is amazing. This one, the lowest was like 68, highest like 130, 140-ish. So definitely a comic of value. Spawn 229, this is homage to Hulk number one. I'm looking at the numbers. I accidentally grabbed one of the Mexican variants. A lot of these actually have Mexican variants that are a lot cheaper. That went for 30. The US version is going for like 50 to hundred and as you can see the black and white variant one went for like over four hundred dollars so a lot of the rarer variants of these are worth a lot more than the regular cover but still the variants can be hard to find most people probably wouldn't have picked that up back in the day so the regular cover is the one you'll find in collections or in flea markets or in garage sales etc Spawn 230, a really awesome Batman 423 homage. He's homaging his own artwork again. I love when he does it. I think this one, because that original Batman cover is a really desirable cover, people are paying a lot for this one. So this one is going for like 128 to 173, 191 even. So this one definitely has some value. Awesome cover. Spawn 231, this is a homage to his Spider-Man number one, which is amazing i love this homage uh, this one's going for like 96 to 139 so this one definitely has value definitely another comic book to try to find or be on the lookout for spawn 237 just a really low print day of the dead issue really cool issue it looks like it's going for about 80 90 dollars on average it looks like i might accidentally got the mexican version when i was pulling prices that went for 25 but still, this is a comic to look out for. And I think there's a couple other rare versions of the cover that go for more. Spawn 238, this one just has a low print run. It's going for like 50 to $125. So definitely be on the lookout for this issue. Spawn 239, another low print issue. This one's going for like 36 to $95. So I, 
honestly, anything in the 200s, I usually grab them all if I see them under five bucks because most of them have at least like a 10 to $20 value, but a lot of them are just so low print that they're going to go for like 30 to $100. Spawn 241, another low print issue going for like 80 to $100. Definitely worth looking out for. Spawn 242, another really low print issue going for like 50 to $100. Definitely worth looking out for. Uh, Spawn 243, another low print. And this one's going for like 100 to $150. This one has some value to it. Awesome. Spawn 244, another low print one going for 65 to $100. It's amazing how many of these issues have a value like this. Imagine if you were just buying them back in the day for $3. You weren't thinking they're going to be worth $100 each, which is crazy to me. And this wasn't even that long ago. What, six, eight years ago? Spawn 245, another kind of low print one. This, this one has about a $40 value. Spawn 248, another low print run, 25 to 50-ish, 70 even. So that one has some value. Spawn 249, another low print cover, awesome cover. This one's like 50 to 140-ish. And you know what, I think I have multiple. I found this issue many times for less than five bucks. Spawn 261, another low print one. This one's going for like 30-ish, 40-ish, maybe a little bit more. Spawn 263, this one's going for like 30 to 60. And again, like most of these issues, there's multiple printings, multiple variants of all these covers. Spawn 265, this is like a $65 to $125 issue. Uh, this is a key issue. This is the first appearance of King Spider, I believe. Uh, again, issue of value. Okay, that was a ton of fun. If you guys like this kind of video and you want to see me do them again, it was actually a lot of work to do 100. So I might cut it back to like maybe 20 issues at a time, but make it a weekly thing. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you want to see more videos like this. And also let me know if there's any comic books you think that I should add to the future list. All right, thank you so much for watching. Bye.